Hi, in this video I'm going to go through my Casio watch collection. My first Casio watch was this AN9, released in 1980. Bit of an abused watch, unfortunately. I had it in a drawer for decades with the battery still in it. The battery leaked and when I took it in they said it was dead as a doornail. But weirdly, about a year later, it just started working again. So here it is. If you want to start a Casio watch collection, here's your first watch, the 91W. Released in 1989, they still sell millions of these things every year. They're cheap as chips, water resistant, with an absolutely terrible little light. If you want to read it at night, you'll probably only be able to see the hour. But still, a fun little watch. My next watch is the A168W. Basically a 91W, but a little bit bigger, with a better light. I love this one because it's a faux gold watch. Basically, it's a plastic watch pretending to be gold. The actual band itself is stainless steel, but the watch is just plastic. Another classic is the CA50, the calculator watch, released in 1984, as seen in Breaking Bad and Back to the Future. Another fantastic watch, the Databank 321. Another calculator watch with buttons that are a little bit bigger so that you can actually use it as a calculator if you wanted to. It has the added feature of being able to store up to 25 phone numbers in it. It was released in 2008, probably a good 10 years after anyone would actually want to store phone numbers into their watch, but that's what makes Casio amazing. One of my favorite watches is the C215, a modern take on the 80s digital watch. Coming in a variety of colors, I've got a blue one, a purple one, and a black and red watch, but about a half a dozen other colors are available. They also have a more serious water resistance, making them a watch that you can actually go swimming in. Perhaps the spiritual successor to the 91W is the 217. Released in 2017, it comes in the same color as the 91W, or you can get this futuristic looking silver one with a negative display. Generally, I'm not a fan of negative displays, but this one's really easy to read. It also comes in a gold version and a rose gold version and a couple of other colors as well. We're now getting out of the realm of super cheap watches and into moderately cheap watches, the G-Shock Squares. The original GW5000 was introduced in 1983. There is a modern variant of the 5610 that pretty much looks like its twin. In 1984, the 5200 was introduced. This watch was sometimes referred to as the Hero model because it was the first popular G-Shock Square. Sometimes it's referred to as the Keanu because Keanu Reeves wore a descendant of this watch in the movie Speed. I have a few G-Shock Squares, all of them 5600s. The 5600 holds the world record for the world's toughest watch after said watch was driven over by a 25 ton truck in 2017 and was still functional afterwards. If I was going to recommend a G-Shock, I would recommend this Keanu. It adds the functionality of solar power and world time and is still one of the cheapest G-Shocks you can get. The GBD200 is a modern take on the classic G-Shock Square. A smartwatch with the functionality that you would expect, but it uses a memory and pixel display, which means you're replacing the battery once a year rather than recharging it once a week. If collecting Casio watches isn't geeky enough for you, how about modding Casio watches? Here I have my Keanu 5600, modded with a Chinese stainless steel case and wristband. You can actually buy a stainless steel G-Shock Square, but it'll cost you five times as much and won't be nearly as much fun. And that is my Casio watch collection. Thank you very much for listening. And yes, I know I need to fix the times. Bye.